All right, good morning and welcome back. Uh, today what I'm going to be going over is the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 unboxing. To make this thing a little easier, I went ahead and just put the SIM card in there. I'll show you where it's at, but we're going to go ahead and get started. All right, so here it is, the box right here, Samsung Galaxy Tab S6, and they got the whole holographic thing going on with the Tab S6 to make it look all fancy, right? We'll go ahead and open this box up. So first thing you're going to find is the tablet itself and you're going to see that it's got the fancy little Samsung on there with the, the cover over it trying to protect the tablet during transportation. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. It's got a little tab. You just pull that up to lift that tablet out of the box. Once that's done on the back, it looks almost like an envelope. You're just going to open this top little portion right here. <clears throat> Slide the tablet out. Alright, and from the first look of it, the tablet is really nice. It looks really good. On the side here, you're going to have the volume and power controls. And then at the bottom, you'll see a little slot here where you can actually remove the SIM card, which comes with a tool in the box itself. On the back, you're going to see that the camera, there's only two lenses. So with this camera, the downfall of it would be that there's no flash on it. So if you're trying to get a tablet to take pictures and you want to take it with this tablet, you're most likely going to have to end up getting some kind of an external flash or light so that you can actually take a picture and it come out decent. But we'll test it out and see. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and power on the tablet. And like I said, I already put the SIM card in there. Now that slot where the SIM card goes also holds a micro SD, which is nice because it'll allow you to upgrade the storage. This is the base model, the 128 gigabyte device with 6 gigabytes of RAM. And it is off T-Mobile's network, so it does have... Uh, LTE and Wi-Fi capabilities and in the box what we're going to find here the standard charging power brick you're going to have the standard USB C type to USB cable which is pretty much the norm for Samsung anymore and then in this box we're going to have a pen removal tool Let's get started. Let me help you get set up more easily. That you by can use to the remove the SIM and grab it if you need to with this so that you're not potentially damaging it. <clears throat> Next what we have is the destruction booklet and on the back of it is going to be the pin removal tool. So if you need to use it, that's where it's at. And then if you need the destructions, the terms, any of that kind of information, you can actually open this box and it's going to be right inside. Alright, the cool thing with this tablet is it does come with an S Pen stylus, which you can use on the device itself. All it does is attach to the back. You will see on the back there is a gray part that looks just like this part of pen on the back. So you just line that up with that little mark and it'll attach to the back and it will actually charge. So that's one cool feature about this tablet is having that pen. Alright, now that the tablet is turned on, we're going to go ahead and get it going. So let's, let's get started. It's going to tell you to look through the Once terms and conditions and, these, and then agree to them in order to start it up. We'll go ahead and mark all of those. We already know what's coming. These two are optional, so I'm not going to select those two. Hit next. You can restore the settings. Of all right, so what it will allow you to do with all ga uh, Galaxy different. devices like normal is it's going to allow you to bring your old data from older devices. If I want to, I could transfer it wirelessly or through USB. I can skip it for now, so what I'm going to do for time purposes is skip, and I'll just get it later. Alright, so I'm going to go into the Wi-Fi, I'm going to select my Wi-Fi network, enter the password, and hit next once it's connected. It's going to check for updates, make sure there's no other updates for the device itself. Alright, now the first thing it's going to do, like any other Samsung device, it's going to ask you to sign into your Google account, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Hit next, it's going to welcome you to the device to Google services. And you can actually add this account if you agree to the terms. So go ahead and hit agree. It's going to migrate that information into the tablet. And then if you want, it makes it super easy. You can just pull it back up to restore from Google services. So I'm just going to pull it from my phone. What you want to restore. So in this case, I can sit here and pick my apps, contacts, call history, or device settings. I'm going to go ahead and transfer all that information over.
And then to protect your tablet, you can go through the different security measures. I prefer face recognition, fingerprints, and a PIN number. It just makes it easier so that if it doesn't recognize my face, I can just go and put in the PIN number and unlock the device anyways, because there are issues with the face recognition through Samsung. But I'll go ahead and start with face recognition. It's going to tell you all about it, and then you just hit continue to go ahead and start that process. But first, you have to set up a PIN number, so we'll go ahead and set up a PIN. All right, now that it's set, it's going to ask you if you wear glasses. If you wear glasses, you need to mark yes. It's going to take a picture of your face first with the glasses, and then it'll have you remove them and continue the process. So you just hold the tablet up with your face in the frame. And then you're going to see on the screen there, it's telling you to remove the glasses. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the glasses. Hit continue and then hold the face. All right, now that the face is registered, it's going to say, <clears throat> it's going to give you the option so that you can turn on a feature which makes it so that when you unlock the device with your face, it'll stay on the lock screen. If you want this to be off, then what it'll do is unlock the device and go to the home screen. All right, so there's two options here. You got faster recognition and you have the brighten the screen option. What these two are gonna do is it's gonna allow it to recognize your face faster and unlock faster. But what it says, one of the downfalls is, is that somebody else could potentially unlock your device with it trying to process it that quickly. I leave it on anyways. I like my device to be open right away. And then for the brighten screen feature, what's gonna happen is when it's darker and it needs to see your face, it's actually gonna brighten the screen so that it can see it. I have ran into issues with this, especially at nighttime. If I hold the device up even close to my face and it brightens the screen, it still has a hard time detecting who I am. So it's not necessarily the best yet. It's definitely not on par with Apple, but hopefully it'll eventually get there. So go ahead and hit OK once you select those settings. And then it has the Google Assistant built in. Just hit Next. Google services, it's gonna ask you if you wanna back up your Google Drive, use the location, the standard things as normal, send usage and diagnostic data, installed updates and apps. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept all that. And then additional apps, you can choose to get the Samsung Flow, Peanut, uh, Google Drive, Play Music, pretty much all your Google stuff. Now I don't need to share my drawings, I have no reason to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. <clears throat> it's going to go ahead and finish up the installation process of getting the tablet set up for use. Alright, so once that's done, it's going to ask you if you want to get the recommended apps on the tablet, and it's going to have you log into your Samsung account, so I'm going to go ahead and do that at this time. Alright, so once you've logged into the Samsung account, it's going to have you go through and have you read the terms and conditions, terms of service, and the Samsung privacy policy in which case I'm going to accept those. Uh, T-Mobile is just asking if they can click that off the device. I'm not going to agree to that, and I'm going to close. All right, now that the setup is complete, we're just going to hit finish and actually get into the device itself. So here we are on the home screen. It's going to start with the standard thing. You have your Google search bar, and you can put apps on the home screen as, long as, as well as widgets. <clears throat> So we'll go into the important part of this thing. So we're gonna start with the camera, right? I'm gonna go ahead and silence notifications so that there is no more annoying noises. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna start with the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that camera up. And from what I can see here, it seems like a pretty good picture but like I said before, those two lenses is kind of a game changer because then you got no flash on it. From here, while we're in the camera, on the top there's gonna be a settings option. We're gonna go into settings. We're gonna check and see what exactly the resolution is of these pictures. So for rear video size, it's currently set to FHD 1920 by 1080, but we can actually up that to an ultra HD level, which I like because it makes it look more realistic. So that's the rear video. I'm going to change the front video as well. I'm going to change that. Well, okay, so unfortunately the front video only has FHD and HD. So we're just going to have to stick with the FHD. Go ahead and open YouTube. And I like to do a, a test video just to see what the resolution actually looks like. So I'm going to type in here the Samsung Ultra HD test video. 
This one has a lot of color in it, so I'd like to use it. Go ahead. Check the quality. So right now it's set to 720. I want to up that all the way to 1440. I'm going to go ahead and put that in full screen mode. So as you can see, it's got very good color and quality in that video. It looks so realistic. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead and swipe up, go back to home, and then what I want to do is now check the settings for the display just to make sure it's actually displaying to the fullest capability. So we're gonna go into the settings, display. So with the display, you can have the brightness adapted to brightness like always, so it will adjust to the environment around you, so it will get brighter or dimmer based on your needs, and as you control it, it will slowly learn what you need for different situations of lighting. <clears throat> there is a blue light filter, and it's nice to have it at night, it won't put as much of a strain on your eyes, and it's supposed to help you fall asleep without being distracted by that light. Uh, there's also night mode. I like to do that. Uh, it gives it just like a dark mode feeling. Everything turns black and it just looks better to me and more clean than the normal standard version. Alright, now with the stylus, so the stylus does come with it, it makes it pretty easy to do stuff on the tablet. If you actually bring the stylus to the screen and then you click the button on the side of it, it's going to give you options on the side of the tablet. You can create a note, view your notes, smart select screen write, live message, and AR doodle so if you want to draw something. The nice thing about smart select is that it will allow you to select the area on the screen that you want to capture. So if I bring the cursor here, drag down, you see it's making a square, and then I release, that's the area that it's going to capture on the screen for a screenshot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a uh, web page with information on it. We'll just go to the weather channel. We'll just check that out. Alright, so let's say you're reading something or you need some notes for a class or whatever the case may be. You can actually bring the stylus down to the screen, click the button. It's going to give you those options. If you select Smart Select, it's going to allow you to either pick an area on the screen that you want to screenshot and save as a photo, or in this case, I'll just drag this little area right here. And that's going to zoom in on it, have you pin it to the screen if you need to, or extract the text. I'm going to go ahead and select the area that's just below Messenger on here with this small area of text. It's going to zoom into it. I can hit Extract Text. And what it's going to do is the Extract Your Text, personalize your messages with Messenger, customize your chat, color, group, name, and more. Share the fun with everyone. Messenger group chats are free and easy to use. So what this is going to allow you to do is if you need to extract text from a document, you can do that. You can either copy it or share that to wherever you need to share it. So that's really nice. Alright, so what I'm currently doing is I've now opened up the split screen view so that it's pushing two apps at once. I've got a YouTube video playing at 1440p, which is like an Ultra HD, and I'm going to be playing a game at the same time to see how well it handles. So we'll go ahead and start this thing. So, here we go. It's still streaming pretty good down below. And then I will be playing this game while So it's kind of nice, so you can sit here, play a game, and watch a video at the same time. So if you're on the move somewhere, you'd actually be able to pull up both and then be entertained while on a road trip or on a plane or whatever the case may be. You can sit here, play a game, watch a video and just relax. So 
so it's pretty good that it can handle both. Seems to be downloading apps with no issue. Uh, it's streaming at this Ultra HD level, which does require a lot of data, but it's also updating these apps fairly quickly, which is good. <clears throat> One nice bonus to having a LTE and Wi-Fi device is that it can use the Samsung Smart Switch and it'll actually pull from both at the same time to try to speed up all the downloads that happen. Alright, now we're going to go into AR Doodle. And that's looking for a face. So I'm going to let it find mine. And then the nice thing about it is you can sit here and you can actually draw on something so like a face for example you could draw something on the face and it'll actually stay there so if I want to like put horns on my head boom look at that now it's gonna stay with the face you have the options down here to change what marker you're using and then what color you want to use so let's say brown I'll use this marker put some highlights on the cheeks yeah. All right. Now let's see. Now they have black in here somewhere. Let's see. No, they don't. Okay. Well, <clears throat> looks like it's gonna be a golden mustache. There we go. Oh, look at that. Mm, perfect. So that's pretty cool that you can actually sit here and draw on stuff as you do it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera. And then I'm going to change the option to everywhere. <clears throat> and then what it's going to do is it's going to focus on wherever I'm at right there. And let's say I want to draw, I'm going to start with green. We'll start with green. Actually brown. So we'll go brown. Now I'm drawing on the table. I'm make just a simple, you know, like kindergarten level tree because I can't draw for crap all right let's go find some ground look at that beautiful tree on the table it stays there no matter where I move the camera if I move it back that tree is still there so it's really cool that you can actually do augmented reality drawing with the tablet that's fun there's another feature on here that's called live messages it allow you to use whatever photo you want. You can take a real-time photo if you want. So we'll take a real photo right here. And then you're able to draw on it. So in this case, hey. Done. All right, it's going to go ahead and save that. And see how it draws on the screen as you play the message. So whatever you're doing on the screen with the picture, it's actually going to replay that to the person that you sent it to, so that's really cool. That right there about wraps up what I have for the Samsung Galaxy S6 Tab. It is a little pricey at $649.99, but if this feels like it's the right tablet for you, then I would highly suggest it, and definitely get the option of having LTE and Wi-Fi so you can use it everywhere. If you have any questions or anything and feel like you need to ask anything, just let me know and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. I hope you have a wonderful day.